these applications were made with Python using tkinter and with tkinter designer, which makes it faster to create applications than it takes to figure it out how to do it in Python by making use of the drag and drop interface and Figma, and then automatically converting the design to code. In this video, I'll show you how to create this dashboard with dynamic tags, input widgets, and buttons that are fully functional with tkinter, so you can spend time making better applications instead of figuring out how to make your widgets look better. To get started, we first need to download it from the GitHub page. You can directly download it here and extract it to get the files. We will then open the folder in a code editor and to use tkint the designer, we will need to install all the requirements listed here. To do that, open up a terminal that is navigated to this folder. The VS Code terminal here automatically navigates into it already. We will then run the command pip install-r requirements.txt to install all of the requirements. We also need to create a Figma account to design the interface with their drag and drop editor. Figma is mainly used to design mockups and wireframes, but we will be using it to design all PKM widgets. To get started, create a new design file and click this icon, or press F and drag over the canvas. This creates a frame which will be the window of the application and its dimensions are over here. You can also set its background color here or manually set the dimensions. I'll make my 700 by 550 pixels. We can create basic shapes by clicking on this drop down. To create a header at the top, select the rectangle, or press R and drag it across. We can also change its fill color over here. As a side note, if you want to move around the canvas, you can hold down the spacebar and your left mouse button and drag it to move the canvas. You can also press Ctrl and Plus to zoom in or Ctrl and Minus to zoom out. Let's add some text by clicking on this icon or pressing T and dragging it to create a text box. You can change the text font here. Make sure it is a font that you have installed as well. Aside from the font size, the font's width, color, and alignment can also be changed here. Before we move on, we need to make sure we give our layers appropriate names so TK and the designer knows what widgets to convert them to later on. I'll leave a link in the description to the documentation here with the layer names that you should use. For example, if we wanted the layer to be a functional entry widget with TK and the, we need to rename it with Textbox. And if we want text and Figma to be a text widget in tkinter, we can leave it as is since tkinter designer can already identify it as a text layer. So I'll rename the rectangles layer here to be a rectangle widget in tkinter. Next up, we'll create this dashboard matrix. Let's create another rectangle. This time I'll make its corners rounded by changing the value over here. I'll also change its fill color to this light yellow color. One of the benefits of using Figma is that you can also add effects such as a drop shadow by clicking on this icon. Feel free to experiment with other effects such as adding an inner shadow as well, but I'll stick with just the drop shadow for now. Now, we don't want to rename this to be a rectangle. If not, the widget will not have the rounded corners and the drop shadow that we added when converted to a TKM application, so we will instead make it an image widget. I will add some text for the heading, giving it a font size of 12 and a darker fill color. Let's do something similar for the mount here, but with a font size of 24 and the same fill color. Another useful feature of Figma is that you can easily duplicate this by selecting everything here, holding Alt and dragging it. I will make this metric for the expense and give it a red fill color. And for the last metric, I'll make it for the balance and give it a green fill color. I will also extend it to take up the extra space here. We can also add images to the frame by dragging it over and resizing it. You can find this image in the GitHub link below. Make sure to rename it as well so TK and the designer knows what to convert it to later on. For the form over here, let's first create a heading text. I'll give my font size of 16 pixels and reuse the same blue color as the header. Let's duplicate it to create the label below. And we can change the field's opacity here as well. I'll then also make the labels font size 12 pixels. For the text entry fields, we'll create a grey rectangle. I will pick this shade of grey, make it rounded. And we should also rename it to text box according to the documentation. 
this ensures that the user will prototype within it later on. I will duplicate this to create another field, this time for the amount of the expense. Lastly, for the submit button, let's create a rounded rectangle. And just to showcase another feature in Figma, we can make this a gradient field by changing this to linear. I will use the same yellow and red colors that were previously used in the document. Make sure to drag this to the end so the color is visible and feel free to experiment with using other colors. We can also drag this part to change the rotation of the gradient. I'll then add the submit text. We can make use of these buttons to center the text. I will also make it 20 pixels and use the same dark red color. And to make this a functional button, let's group both of these two layers by selecting them both. By holding shift, we will then right click and group the selection, renaming it to button as well. As a side note, if you're having trouble coming up with the design for the widgets in your application, you can take advantage of pre-made UI kits. There are many free and paid UI kits available for Figma, allowing you to simply copy over the ones you need and customizing them. This can save you even more time when designing your applications. I'll leave links to a few useful ones below. Before we convert this design, we can also make use of plugins such as to add icons. We can use plugins by clicking on this button, going to the plugins tab and I recommend searching for this icon say plugin. The plugin allows us to search for icons and also to change their colors. Make sure to select the frame first before adding the icon. I'll place it here and rename it as well. If your icon's layer is not within the frame, you can drag it to be inside. And this is just to ensure that everything you have here will be placed in the window when converted to code. There are also a bunch of other free Figma plugins you can make use of for both design and for inspiration. Now, to convert our design to Python code, go to the files downloaded for TK the Designer and find a folder called GUI and run the GUI.py file. We need to fill in a few details here, the first being the token ID, which we can do by going back to the files here and under your account setting, add a personal access token for TK the Designer to be able to access your design. Give it a name and copy the token over. Make sure you save the token somewhere else as well. Now we'll go back and copy the URL of the design. Also ensure all layers are within the frame, since if they aren't in the same frame, they won't be in the same window when converted. We can then specify the output path of where we want the generated code to be placed at. I'll place mine in the same key in the design or folder. Finally, we can click generate and wait for it to do its magic. You can view the current progress and any error messages here in the console. And while it is generating code for our app, the interface will be unresponsive, which is perfectly fine. Once that is done, you'll find a new build folder wherever you specify the output folder to be at. In my case, it is the same TK the Designer folder. This contains everything you need for your TK the application. Within it, you'll find a folder for the assets. And within that, TK the Designer has placed the images and converted the button to an image as well, so that we have the same design as the one we created. We also have a Python file with the widgets such as tags and images being created and positioned using the same coordinates we have in Figma. The window size and color are also the same as the ones we entered. If we run it, we can see that we have the same application that we created in Figma, designed in a few minutes. And the button has a function hooked up to the URD that is called whenever the button is clicked, as an example. Since what we have is ultimately still a TK in the application, more complex features such as tables and charts can still be implemented. And I'm working on a video that showcases how to create this, so subscribe if you want to get notified when it comes out. One common problem with TK in the designer if you're using rounded buttons and it is placed against a colored background or an image is that there will be white parts around the button when it is converted, since buttons need to be a rectangle in TK in the to fix this, simply create a new rectangle, resize it to fit the button, and use the same color as the background. Or alternatively, duplicate the layer if you are using an image using Ctrl and D, and crop it to fit the button. In both cases, you then need to group both layers and rename it to button. This makes the button rectangular, but also ensures that it is rounded. To showcase how you can work with the widgets here, we will make it so that when the user adds a new expense, it updates the expenses label here. To do that, we'll first store the current expense as a variable, and we'll create a function that acts as a submit handler for the new expense form. In this function, we'll first get the expense entered using the get method on the entry widget, just like how we could do in any other key in the application, which in this case is assigned to the entry underscore to variable. 
You could rename this robot to make it more descriptive, but I'll leave it as is. Make sure to convert it to a float value as well and add it to the current expenses. To modify the expense robo, we'll also need to indicate that we're referring to the global robo. We'll then need to display the new expense. Since the expense tax is shown by using the create tax method on the canvas created here, we will first need to store the ID written by it. We can then pass in the item config method on the canvas and pass in the ID to update the tax to the new expense value. Finally, we can replace the example function generated by TK and the designer with our submit handler function. And now if we run it, we are able to update the expense value in our application. Let's also add a dollar sign at the start using an F string. As a side note, you can also find this finished code in the link below. Besides that, that's about all for this video. If you're interested about making modern GUI applications using Tkinter, you'll probably be interested in this video as well. If this video has helped you, please consider possibly liking it and subscribing to my channel for more of such content.